Hello everyone, this is Joshua from Pixelate and I'm here to talk to you about floating action buttons. Now, before we begin, if you're new to the channel, please don't forget to click the subscribe button down below to get notified of our latest updates as well as when new tutorial videos get uploaded. Also, if you think that this video has been useful for you or has helped you in any way, please don't forget to leave a like down below. It really helps us a lot. Also, if you have clarifications, rather you have questions you want answered, please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. So without further ado, let's begin. In our previous video, what we tackled was the expansion items, right? So what we did with the expansion items was we created an item that whenever we click on it, it expands, right? Hence the title itself. Also, we created a simple button which triggers the expansion itself. So we bound it as a vModel variable instead of the typical expansion list. What we did also in that previous video was we customized our expansion items, right? So what we did was we added several elements to it using the slots, as well as we added a custom content inside it in its entirety. So in this video, what we're going to talk about is the floating action button. So you might ask, what is a floating action button? So a floating action button represents the primary action in a page. So think of it in terms of a, it's an action item that triggers a very important event in case of, uh, let's say, applications. So for example, if you have a, let's say the contacts list application, in a contacts list, what you need is the most primary feature of that is the addition of contacts, right? So what we need to do is, of course, you're going to create a button which simply does that. So a button that allows you to add and as well as to create new contacts. So that is the most important action in a contacts list, right? So you might be asking, where do you put typically a button like that? So usually you put it on the bottom right. So also, aside from that, you can use this element in terms of creating important actions. For example, not just the creation. So it is based on what you need it to do. As long as it caters the most important functionality. Also, in websites where it is typically used, you might see it as a button that whenever click, it scrolls all the way up to the top, right? So in a sense, it is, it is a back to top button. So that's what the floating action button typically does in its context. So based on Quasar's definition, a floating action button represents the primary action in a page. For example, like we stated earlier, the back to top button. But it is not limited to only a single action. It may contain sub actions. In this case, when you click the button itself, it opens additional sub actions in this case. Also, based on their definition, it can be used anywhere or rather it can be used inline in your pages or layouts itself. Also, it says here that you don't need a queue layout to use the floating action buttons itself. So going to the most important feature rather, you might ask again, so what or rather, how do we create a floating action button? Typically, what we do is there are two options. You may have a non-expandable button, which is when you click on it, it does basically it. So it does a certain action or the expandable version. So for the expandable, what happens is if you click on it, you uh, rather sub actions appear. So in order to demonstrate what we can do is we can use Quasar's example right here. So based on their explanation again, if you want a non-expandable fab or rather floating action button, in this case, let's shortcut it to fab. To, know, to make it fabulous, all you need is a round button wrapped in a queue page sticky if used on a queue layout. So going with this example, what we can try is we can create a queue page sticky. So here in our code over here, we can add a queue page sticky. So let's try doing that. So let's add a queue page sticky. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to position it on the bottom right corner by using the position and then we use the bottom right value and then next is we're going to add an offset so what do you mean by the offset it basically tells our application to move our button a bit towards a certain distance based on the pixels that we provide so in our case we can try 18 and 18 like so and now that we have a q page sticky in our hands what we can do is we can add a q button so let's try adding a q button 
and then let's set it to fab, meaning it is a floating action button. And then let's add an icon, let's say add for now. And then next is we're going to add a color to it. So let's add some color, let's say, uh, let's use blue. So like that. And so as you can see in our example, we have a floating button now right here. You will appreciate it more if we turn it into a mobile rather, or in, in terms of orientation, we use it as a mobile. So let's head to our developer tools and then let's try, let's trigger our mobile view. And then let's set this one to, let's say uh, iPhone 5. So as you can see, it is now over here. So imagine you have a mobile phone right now, and then you have this giant of, or rather this giant button right here. So that is what the floating action button does basically. Imagine that you have a phone and then you have a giant button based on where you want it to place, maybe in the bottom right, where, it's typic where it is typically located, or you can have it in the bottom left as well. So let's say bottom left, and then what it's going to do is it's going to move the element to the left, right? So you can place it anywhere you want. So it is based on your discretion as to where you want to put it, or rather where you want to place the button itself. So aside from that, you also have the other option. So let's turn it back for now, so now like that. So aside from the non-expandable option, you also have the expandable option. Now for the expandable, what you need to do is you're going to create a QFAB element like this one. So you have a QFAB. And then inside that QFAB, you're going to place QFAB actions to determine its, or rather to set it as a sub action. So in our case, what we can do is instead of wrapping it in a QPage sticky like this one, maybe we can retain it. So what we can do is we're going to basically create a QFAB, right? So let's remove this sticky for now to emphasize as to what it actually does. So let's wrap it inside a div instead, like so, yeah, okay, so like that. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to use the QFAB element. So we use the QFAB. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to add some color to it. Mm, let's say blue. So again, let's use the blue. And then let's use the icon. Let's say keyboard arrow. Up to determine its icon name. And then lastly is what we will, or rather we will use the direction property to tell how the button expands. So in this case, let's try down for now. We can try it later on with different, uh, rather with different directions. Next, now that you have a QFAB element, what you need is a QFAB, I, or rather QFAB action. And then we do the same uh, rather procedures. We add some, color to it, let's say red to make it colorful. And then let's add some icon, let's say male. And then let's add another QFAB icon, or rather icon, I mean action. And then let's set it to color, uh, let's say yellow. And then let's set the icon to home, you know, just to spice things up a little bit. So now that we have that, what you can see here is we have our element right here. Oh, I can't see the yellow. Okay, let's change that color to orange make it more visible instead. So as you can see, there it is, right? So let's try using a different icon instead. Oh, I used it the wrong way. So it was supposed to be underscore. So apologies. So, right, so, ah, yes. Oh, but since the direction is going down, let's set it to down as well. So if we click that, the expandable floating action button creates sub actions based on the direction you set it to. In our case, we set it to down. So if we set this one to up, the direction goes upwards and same goes with left and right. So let's set it to down for now. So that's how you implement a basic floating action button. So aside from those, you can also have internal labels. What do you mean by internal labels? So in this example, you have actions as label, as you can see right here. So in order to implement that, you simply add a label to it. So in our case, we have label here, right? So we can do that as well. So let's see, let's say, uh, let's add some label to it. Let's say the label is um, options. So as you will notice now, it has a options label to it. Aside from the floating action button itself, we can also add labels to the sub actions as well. So for this case, let's say, let's add a male label to it. And then for this one, 
let's set it to home. Now, what happens is if we expand the button, you will see that each action has its own label as well. So aside from having icons, you can also have labels if that is what you desire. So also, you can trigger the internal label based on the V model itself. So in order to implement that, what you need to do is you need to bind a V model to the hide label property. So in order to implement that, what you can do is we can set a button, rather, let's say, yeah, uh, not this one. Let's create another button. So let's say Q button. And then if you click it, hide label, let's set the hide label equals to the opposite of hide label. And then let's set this to hide fab labels. Label. Yes, label. So let's next is what we're going to do is we're going to set a hide label to false. And then finally, in order to bind the hide labels itself, we need to add the properties here. And then we append the V model, which is the hide label itself. So if we do that, if I click this, the label disappears. And then if I click this again, the label reappears. So you can trigger those labels using a V model. So next, aside from that, you can also set the vertical alignment. So in this case, as you can see, this one is aligned to the left, this one is aligned to the center, and this one is aligned to the right. In order to implement that, what you can do is you can add a label position right here. And then for the QFAB, you set the vertical actions aligned in order to implement it like so. So by doing that, let's, if we try this, let's say, we, let's set it to left. If we move that, or rather if we implement that, the labels align themselves to the left. If we set this one to the right, they align themselves to the right as well. And then if we remove this all together, its default alignment is centered, as you can see right here. Also. Aside from that, you can set the label names itself to certain elements or to certain labels, as you can see right here. But, or rather in Quasar's context, let's say, if you set the vertical alignment to the left, the labels also follow suit. So they move themselves as well. Aside from that, you can also add external labels. So in this case, what they did is, as you can see, you have an external label here. And then they have a label over here. So in order to implement that, you simply add a external label out here. And then as you can see, our label is right here, outside of the button itself, right? So over here, we have the options. So if we do that with our other sub actions as well, what happens is all of their labels also pops outside of the buttons. So if you click this, as you can see now, they are outside as well, like so. And then aside from those, you can also style the labels themselves, which is external or rather detached from the button itself. So in this case, they simply added a label class and then they added an external label, right? So they can also position the labels themselves based on where you want them to be. And then that or rather they added some additional label classes like this one. So in our case, let's say the label class here is Let's use the text red. So as you will notice, the label itself is colored red because of our text red class right here. So also, aside from that, you can set the label position. So we can try this one as well. Label position, let's say top. So if we do that, instead of putting it to the side, like earlier, it is now above the button. So as you can see now, you can style the labels based on wherever you want them to be. So in our case, we added a text red and then we moved the label itself to the top instead of to the side by default. So that's how you customize in external labels. So aside from those, you can also toggle external labels like this one. So since we have our button still bound to the elements, if we do this, it hides the label itself, right? 
Since we bound this button to this label as a V model, what happens is if we close this, or rather if we click this, the, the label disappears. And then if you click it again, it reappears, right? Since it is bound to the V model by simply inversing the values. So aside from those, you can also hide the icons themselves, or rather the icons itself, or itself. So in order to do that, what we need to simply do is let's, let's remove these labels first, and then let's simply add a hide icon. So if we do that, the icon disappears, right? So in order to make it much better, let's add a label options, let's say. Now, you have a button without an icon, but it is still a floating action button, as you can see right here. So, aside from those, you can also set padding to it. So, by simply adding a padding property, you can specify how many, or rather, how big the padding that you're going to use is going to be. So, in this case, let's try using the padding for this one. Let's say MD. So, if we add a padding MD to it, it has it contains a bigger padding so let's remove the hide icon first let's remove this one now you have a much bigger padding right and then what we can do is for example this one they added a bit or rather a huge padding which is this one so let's say let's set it to xl and then xl what happens is our button contains now a padding equivalent to an xl format by xl it means quasar's way of saying that I want a small padding for this one, medium, large, and extra large. So you have SM, MD, LG, and XL. In this case, we added a ton of padding in this button itself. And so, aside from those, by default, you have a rounded button, right? So you can also set it into square style. You simply add a square parameter to it. So in our case, let's simply add a square. By doing so, our rounded button turns into a squared button, as you can see right here. It now has corners, right? So aside from the square style, you can also use it with a key page sticky feature, so like this one. So what they did here is they simply wrapped the key page sticky inside the button itself. So if we do this, so what we can do is let's remove the div, let's, let's replace it with a key page sticky. What happens is our button sticks to the bottom itself like so if we click options or so let's move the direction up since it's in the bottom now right and then let's move this up so if we click this one it pops upwards right so regardless of what i do whether i resize the display or rather if i resize this it stays on the bottom right like so. So it is still expandable. But if I return to desktop mode, it is still the same. It is still attached to the bottom right instance. And lastly, you have a draggable. So in order to implement this nice feature, what we can do is we need to simply add this property over here, right? As you can see, it is now draggable. For the script, what they did is they simply added a small script over here to trigger the draggable or rather the draggable functionality for it. So as you can see, I can drag the floating action button anywhere. Based on these features and capabilities, you can explore and you can implement or you can create your own floating action buttons and then you can attach them to your applications based on your needs. So it all depends on how you want to use them and where you want to use them. But mostly they are commonly used in websites as a back to top button or in a mobile app, which is an, or rather it is a button that triggers an important event for that application itself. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching everyone. You can leave a comment down below for further clarifications or if you have questions. If you see that this video has been useful for you, please don't forget to leave a like down below. Again, this is Joshua from Pixelate. See you later, pixelators.